Hi, this is Abdul Bhartia and welcome to TFR Insights. In, in the modern world, cloud is kind of become the ultimate destination for workload, though it's not the only destination, but it is a critical piece of any business's uh, digital transformation journey. And if you look at the crisis that we are all going through, only those businesses will survive who already have cloud as part of their strategy. Uh, but if you look at cloud, it's not a magical place, you know, it can fail, it does fail, we all know that. And businesses cannot afford any downtime, which also means that high availability of application should be the number one priority as businesses move their applications to the cloud. And today we have with us Michael Balanceri, Senior Vice President of Products and Marketing at Cyrus Technology, to talk about this topic, high availability as companies migrate to the cloud. Michael, first of all, welcome to the show once again. Thank you. If you look at this cloud migration and uh, as SIOs and as part of the ecosystem, you do see a lot of customers, they are migrating their workloads to the cloud. Can you kind of give some examples where, you know, some of the core challenges that they face when they uh, move to the cloud and suddenly high ability become a big challenge for them? So a number of years ago, the cloud started really picking up with different workloads going up, test and development, less critical tier, lower tier applications where um, the, they're not as critical to the business. As we're seeing now the past few years, customers are looking to migrate their tier one applications, their critical business applications to the cloud. What they're finding is what they use on premises doesn't necessarily migrate to the cloud. You can't just lift and shift it. When they, what we're finding with customers is they're getting to a point where they're ready to go and they realize we're not actually ready. They look at the, the full plan. Uh, we had one customer actually looking to migrate, planning to migrate well down the path of that plan, uh, a huge SQL Server environment. When they got near the end of the plan and ready to deploy and execute, they looked at all the requirements and, and their business requirements and realized what they had planned for was not gonna meet their availability SLAs when they went to the cloud. So they halted the entire project. It was a very long-term project, huge project, a lot of cost, a lot of visibility. They had to halt the entire project because they weren't able to achieve the availability SLAs and protect their applications or SQL Server environments the way they really needed to. When do you kind of enter in the picture to actually <laughs> help that stuck train move forward? Sios got involved at that point. Typically, we're involved earlier so we can help in the project planning and design the whole solution and architect it. They brought Sios in at that point for our product data keeper solution that works with Microsoft clusters. So what they found was their clustering solution, their Microsoft Windows clustering that they were wanted to use, they were familiar with it on-prem, they couldn't just bring that to the cloud. So they were a bit stuck. Our solution allows that. We can take what is typically a shared storage configuration and we can separate that into local storage. So the customer was able to redesign quickly their environment, their plan for the cloud. And it was quick because we didn't have to re-implement or redesign a, a new availability solution. We were simply replicating the storage underneath to remove the shared storage requirement. So to the customer, they got a very similar solution for the cloud. So their learning curve and training for their staff was basically nothing. Uh, the reconfiguration of their applications to re redefine how the clustering would work, how the uh, monitoring and the failover and the recovery would work, that was already set on-prem. They just took everything they had on-premises and basically moved that to the cloud. So when, when Sios got involved, they were able to identify the solution uh, and then move forward with it rather quickly because they didn't need to re-architect. And in most cases, we are dealing with brownfield deployment, not greenfield deployment, where they already have a lot of applications you know, in place. So when customers do move to the cloud and they choose a high availability solution, uh, what are the areas that they should focus on? Like, so that, as you just gave some example, they, 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 they should not go and kind of refactor a lot of their code. You know, they still have to meet their SLAs and there should be minimum disruption. So can you talk about some of the key areas that they should focus on when they pick an HA solution? So the cloud, as you mentioned, it's, it's not necessarily greenfield, it's brownfield. They've already gone there with a lot of systems as we talked about. 
now there's a whole nother there's a whole nother dynamic to think about when they're bringing an SAP environment or an Oracle or a SQL Server, a critical business system. So now they have to consider what are my options in the cloud? How can I bring my system to the cloud? Some solutions like Windows clusters, we can help just basically lift and shift that to the cloud. Other solutions, they can't. They need to re-architect and redesign. Uh, what we're hearing from customers, and we see this across uh, the industries, are the flexibility of cloud makes things seem easy. And there's a lot of noise, and it's not noise that's intentionally trying to be noise, but there's a lot of solutions out there. Cloud brings a lot of options. And where we what we find with customers is there's confusion as to what does that actually provide for me? How can I implement that? And will that give me what I actually need? We hear things about nines, four nines, five nines, three nines. When you look underneath what that means and how you have what you have to do to achieve that, it's not quite as straightforward as what it might seem. And people aren't trying to be misleading when they say we provide three nines or four nines. It's just that there are details of that that when when the customer looks into that, they realize, oh, I can't I can't actually accommodate that because I, I'm not able to implement in the way to achieve that four nines. So what they're finding is the the options that are available, there's a lot more research has to go into that. They have to understand the storage options, uh, the, the failover options, the monitoring options. In the cloud, you have single sites and single zones and multi multiple zones and multi-AZ availability zone configurations in multiple regions if you want DR. So they need to understand the options for those and what they want to apply for their specific systems. It is a lot of work from their end. Um, when, when we look at providers like, you know, SIOs, you know, what are the areas where you actually help them? Do you just offer, you know, that you click a button, you buy a solution, or you also do some consultation and help them to better, you know, understand their own infrastructure. It's not just about, as you said, lift and shift, but also guidance throughout their journey. The process is really a consultative process. We, we work with a lot of system integrators who are helping customers with a larger project, a migration of SAP to the cloud or Oracle or some other large system. So we, we work with those uh, vendors, the customer and the integrators, to develop and design early on their availability solution. What SIOs brings from a technology standpoint is flexibility and, and, and ease of use. And flexibility is important. As we talked about all the different solutions that are available in cloud, there are replication solutions, there are storage solutions, the operating system provides some capabilities, the application vendors provide capabilities. A lot of different pieces and parts where where SIOS brings flexibility is that we have very open platforms, very open solutions where the customers can choose what's best to breed for them, for their particular applications, whether they want to use some shared storage or some local type of storage, custom storage in the cloud. We can cluster on top of that. If they want to use an application-based replication technology, we can cluster on top of that. If they want a full comprehensive cluster with orchestration, failover, recovery, and data replication, we can help facilitate that. It's really up to the customer to determine, and this is where we get involved to help them understand what are my needs, what are the solutions that are available to me, and what one meets my needs the best, and how can I integrate the right pieces to achieve my goals. And as you mentioned, there are so many different stacks. The operating system is there, applications is there, are there stories there. I want to talk a bit about application uh, for, for, for a while. Uh, there are so many different solutions that are available, but when it comes to application production, why is it important and how much uh, companies, businesses should worry or care about application production? We think about protection. We, we think about an app, it's always about the application. What I care about when I try to get an email, right? I go into Outlook. If I can't get to Outlook, if I can't get to email, I'll call IT and say, exchange is down, right? I can't get to this system. I say, that application's down. To me, I don't care if it's the application, if it's a network, if it's a storage, if it's the hardware, I, it doesn't matter to me as the user. So what's really important is the application availability. And while, while some systems look at, uh, perform a heartbeat at the hardware level to make sure the server is responding, the application may not be responding. 
So although the heartbeat's alive, as the end user, I can't get to my application for whatever reason. So what we find to be the optimal place to monitor and protect your systems is at the application level. If you think about a system stack, rudimentary, you have the application, you have the operating system, you have the hardware, the storage, and then you have the infrastructure around it. The higher up in that stack you can protect, you can monitor, it gives you a number of benefits. At the application layer, if you can monitor and detect and recover from outages and failures there, you have you can you can perform much less invasive recovery mechanisms. For instance, if a service stops, if you can restart a service without having to reboot the server, one, it's much quicker. So the higher up in the stack you are, you can reduce your recovery times. It's also much less risk. Every time you have to reboot a server or fail it over, you have to orchestrate a number of different actions and make sure they happen in the right sequence. There's risk of data loss, data integrity, synchronization issues, and more downtime. So the further you are up in the stack, the faster you can recover and the, you can reduce the risk. With SIOs, we actually have integration in the application. We protect the different layers in the stack. So if your hardware fails, your storage fails, we'll handle that. But we don't use that one big hammer of failover every time some minor issue happens. We use application recovery kits that are specific to an application. So we know what services they are that they run on, what are the critical ones, what should be running in the OS as well. And we monitor those. And if there's something not responding, we can take action on it to restart a service. We can reboot a server locally if that doesn't help. So take the next step. And in the end, if that system is just unavailable, we can fail that over to a secondary site. So we take steps in order of quickest time to recover and least risk and move down as we need to. Uh, Michael, if you look at this this crisis that we are going through, I hope that it will be over soon. We don't know. <laughs> we don't have any ETA for now. But what we have seen is that a lot of businesses uh, are moving to the cloud. A lot of crit critical operations will move to the cloud, uh, which also mean that all the things that we talked about, high availability, disaster recovery, that will also become a critical piece of their strategy. So what I want to understand from you is that in this post-COVID-19 world, what would be the world look like in terms of businesses putting high availability higher up in their stack? Uh, can you talk about that? COVID-19 has really changed our, our whole way of thinking in IT and, and accessibility. And when we build business continuity plans and we think about that, we try to assess all the risks. I'm not sure how many people ever assume we couldn't get out of our houses, right? So COVID-19 really changed, not only per, you know, personally for sure, but from the business standpoint, if as an administrator or a DBA, I can't get to my data center to replace hardware or to take care of an issue, I, I may not have thought of that. What we're seeing is a lot of thinking now in the business continuity planning about that specifically and the migration to the cloud because now you don't have to have physical access. You assume somebody else does and they can maintain that. But now we can access our systems and do management and maintain those from an availability standpoint and from a maintenance standpoint without having to actually get to our physical data center. Again, the COVID-19 really changed our whole way of thinking, uh, things we never thought about that we never never thought would be possible uh, for months. You know, an earthquake, a hurricane could be, or a major storm could be a couple days, maybe a week or two where we, we can't get to somewhere. But this has really changed the dynamic of, of thinking and how we think about our business continuity plans. Thank you, Michael, for, for taking time out and uh, talking to me today about high availability as companies migrate to the cloud. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you very much.